God has been good to me. And the saving benefits of the work of God on this planet have even been directed toward me. And I am guilty of all my crimes against a God who has been nothing but compassionate toward me. This is very important. Let me, in this culture, in this pagan culture, let me give you a little bit of advice about something. One of the things that I like to emphasize whenever I'm dealing with pagans, with those who really are anti-Christian, anti-Christian God, everything else, if I tell them, you've got a problem with God because He's holy, you've got a problem with God because He's righteous, well, then they, they throw up this thing about, well, you know, you're imposing a morality upon me and all these different things. Now, I do do that. But here's something I like to throw at them. You have a problem with God. You have anger against God. You hate God because He's good. What do you mean? Why would anybody hate a good God? You hate God because He's loving. What do you mean I hate God because He's loving and good? Why would anybody do that? Well, no one would unless they were not loving or good. And you are neither. You're not loving. I am too. Well, let's just look at your relationships for a moment. Let's just talk about relationships you've had in the past with people. How loving have you demonstrated yourself to be? Well, I, I'm, how good are you? Let me just ask you that question. Let's just talk about your goodness. You see, just throw it back at them. Because it really shocks people when you tell them, look, you've got a problem with God because He's good. Deal with it on that level. And I love to portray. And, and listen to me, you guys that have understood some things about sovereign grace, you better be careful and you better, you better not just interpret everything trying to protect that doctrine. Here's what you need to see. There are many verses in the Bible. I believe in sovereign grace as strong as anybody on the face of the earth. I am not going to interpret verses, though, out of their context in order to protect the doctrine of sovereign grace. I do not have to protect the doctrine of sovereign grace. Okay? Just interpret a verse for what it says. Just do that. You're not required to tie up all the loose ends. You're required to proclaim Scripture. And that's what I love about Spurgeon. When he got to a text, he preached the text instead of trying to manipulate the text around so that it didn't in any way infringe upon the doctrine of sovereign grace. Because if you do that, you'll be doing the same thing that the Arminian does when he preaches Romans 9. Don't do that. Preach the text. And be excited about preaching the love of God towards all men. Be excited about giving an open invitation to all men. Tell all men if they go to hell, it is their own fault. Beg men to come to Christ. Show all men how God has been good to them. He has been. Show all men that God does not desire the destruction of the wicked. He most certainly does not. Lay the whole thing at the feet of men absolutely preposterous to get into all these ideas of decrees and everything else and being so careful with your language you can no longer preach the gospel. It's just absurd. What you're doing is you're preaching in such a way and trying to be so clean so that you won't be a scandal. You're doing it for your own reputation. And when the Bible says something, just go ahead and preach it. And then don't spend 30 minutes explaining what you're not meaning. So that someone from the camp you're in won't think you've gone awry. Just preach the text. 
Some guys preach like commentators after a, a presidential debate. Well, he said this, but now let's go in to see what he really meant. No, that's what he really meant. What he said. Don't protect God. He doesn't need your help. I think it was in a Woody Allen thing one time. I, 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 I'm not sure. I think it was Woody Allen or some. They had this thing in which he's standing in the line of a movie, a movie line to go see a movie. And there was this guy just, you know, saying all these things about the movie and all this stuff and giving his opinion on what the guy meant and what the director meant by this and that and everything else and arguing his great decisions. And, and I think it was Woody Allen stepped out and said, well, no, that's not what he meant, and back and forth. And I think Woody Allen was the one who directed the film. And, and it's the same way. Well, this is what it says, but we want to be really careful here because we don't... No, we want to say just what it says. Don't worry about it. You are not called to be the great um, centurion that protects certain doctrines in the Bible. Just preach the text. Okay? Now, let's go on. He says this, Prescribe and teach these things can mean keep commanding and teaching these things. Look, you have no authority. Okay? You have no authority in yourself. None. Zip. I don't care what you've experienced or anything else, you have no authority. Now, most, why do I say that? Because most people believe their authority comes from what they experienced. You, you know, parent. You know, has raised 14 kids. Well, based on my experience, well, their experience, they may have 14 kids that are all serving in missionary, as missionaries all over the world, but that parent actually did everything unbiblical. And God was just gracious. And there could be a man and a woman who greatly dedicated themselves to simply obeying God and their children didn't turn out so right. Now, you judging this, these two parents, you're going to say, this one's really godly because of his success and this one over here is just a failure because of the lack of success. That's not true. I have seen diamonds come out of garbage cans. So when a parent comes to you and says, well, based on my experience, you ought to do this. That can be good if their experience is founded upon Scripture. In the same way, well, I experienced this in my life. But the question is, was your response biblical? Did you, did you do the right thing in Scripture? Do you see what I'm saying? Now, as a minister, you don't get up there and talk on the authority of your experience. And I don't think, and I have to be careful here, don't put so much emphasis on your calling or your anointing. Now, you may be called and anointed to serve the Lord in a special way, but if what you're doing doesn't line up with Scripture, you don't have authority. So, commanding what? Commanding what Scripture says. These things, these principles, these truths of Scripture. But when you do preach, you ought to preach as one who has authority. Why? Not because you're God incarnate but because you're taking the words of God incarnate and you're explaining them and applying them correctly. You have authority only to the degree you correctly interpret this book and clearly proclaim what it says. Now, he says, Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity show yourself an example of those who believe. Now, Guys, you can't take half of this verse. You can't just take half of this verse. I, so many young guys that, now don't look down on me just because I'm young. Okay, I won't look down on you just because you're young if you show yourself an example of those who believe in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Do you see? It's not just don't look down on me because I'm young. Don't look down on me. Why? because of these character traits in my life. Now, here's something I want you to look at. If you ever, though, someone looks down at you and you say, don't look down at me, you've got a problem. 
Now, there may come a time when you have to defend your ministry for the sake of the ministry and the truth. I was in a conversation the other day, and the guy said, sometimes I just want to fight. And I said, why? He said, the way, the way some people treat you. I said, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, it just didn't right, especially some of these young guys. And I said, I said, let, look, let God be the defense. If God wants to send a bear out of the woods to eat some of them, let us pray that that not be the case, that God show mercy. But we have no need of...